It's simple. It really is. Just taking a few more minutes to do this and adding in a few more things, it's huge. It's why my refried beans are better than yours. I love refried beans. In fact, my daughter is obsessed with them. But how many times are they just so flavorless and become an afterthought and not something that can take the flavor of a simple burrito or huevos rancheros or nachos over the top? I'm going to show you a few things to make sure these are dang delicious. Sound good? Let's cook. We are going to kick this recipe off with one pound or 16 ounces of dried pinto beans. Now it's important to spread these out on any clean surface or cutting board and pick through them. Make sure there's no unwanted particles or dirt or anything like that. Once you've done so, we're just going to return them to the bowl. What I like to do though is take them over to a sink and run some cold water over them. Just give them a really quick rinse. Run your hands through there. Doesn't need to be anything extravagant. And then of course, just strain them through a fine mesh strainer, give them a few shakes, and then set them to the side for a second. Also in addition, let me say that black beans make incredible refried beans. They give it a nice earthy tone and flavors. Just in case maybe that's all you got, that's what you wanna try. Just saying, here's what we do now. We're going to add those strained and rinsed beans right to a very large pot. We're immediately going to add in some cold water. You want to be about three or four inches over the top of the beans. Now, a great form of measurement for me is to the second knuckle in my middle finger. Once the top of the water is there, I know I'm perfect. Now for some flavor, we're going to add in a half peeled yellow onion and about five or six garlic cloves. If you like garlic and want a little bit more, no problem. Next, we're going to immediately add in one tablespoon of dried epazote. You can find fresh, fantastic. And for some nice earthy tones in here, we're going to add one and a half tablespoons of ground cumin. Let's immediately crank the heat to high. What we're looking to do is bring this to a boil, which is going to take about 10 minutes or so. At this point, I'm just going to come back and give it a stir, move some things around. Once you see that your beans are to this consistency, starting to wrinkle up in the outside, perfect. Let's crank the heat down to low and simmer it until the beans are tender. Now these are going to take roughly 90 minutes or so for the beans to soften up. And when it comes to the epazote, you should be able to at least get the dry version from any local Latin market. Now if you can find fresh there, score. But if you're looking for a great substitute, oregano or marjoram will work. Let's come back after that time and give the beans a look. It smells incredible in here. These look awesome. A great way to know we're ready to go to the next stage is to give them a little pinch. If they easily press and squish like that, it's perfect. At this point, let's turn the heat completely off. Now in a separate large frying pan or rondeau pan, I love to use it. I'm going to add in a third cup of rendered bacon fat lard. Do not skip this step. So much flavor here. That's why I always say save that rendered bacon fat. Let's move it around, make sure it's melted over medium high heat. And what I like to do is add in one seedless serrano pepper, fry it up in the oil for maybe two to three minutes. Get that oil nice and flavored up. It won't be too spicy, but it'll add just the right amount of zest to our refried beans. Now take the pepper out. We're going to add in one peeled and small diced yellow onion. We're going to turn the heat down to low medium. We're going to take the time to caramelize these about 20 to 25 minutes get them very very nice and brown I'm going to add another level of flavor there and at this point i'm going to add in three more garlic cloves i love garlic this has been finely minced and you know once you smell it it's done cooking give it a stir probably going to take about a minute or so for it to cook through and i always say it you know i do take the time to caramelize these onions it will absolutely add to the complexity in the flavor department and make these so much more delicious. Do not skip it. Go over to the pot with the beans. We're going to be using a skimmer or if you have a slotted spoon, totally fine. Drain off any excess cooking liquid. We're going over to the pan with the onions and garlic. Turn the heat to medium high. The goal here is to sort of saute pan fry these, get more of that flavor infused into those beans, the onions, the lard, a hair little sear on the beans. Not going to do much, but it is going to add some flavor. Smells incredible in here. Now, at this point, we are going to swap out that spoon for a hand masher. Now, you can mash these until completely smooth, or they can be a little bit chunky. Totally up to you. I've actually seen someone use an immersion blender, too, to make sure they're really smooth. Now, to sort of rehydrate these, add a little bit more flavor and texture, we're going to add a cup or so of that bean cooking liquid. 
it's going to add a lot more flavor to. So mash all that goodness together. Now at this point, incredibly important, what we want to do is season it up with sea salt and some fresh cracked black pepper. At this point, I like to add in that serrano pepper that we fried up and now one cup of shredded Oaxaca cheese. This, my friend, is going to make all the difference in the world. Mix it in until the cheese is completely melted. This looks fantastic. It tastes fantastic. Let's just pull it off the heat for a second and set it to the side. Simple recipes, simple ingredients, basic cooking techniques always makes the best food. And when you practice them, they'll definitely elevate your everyday cooking. That's what we're all about here. Let me show you how to plate these up. I like to serve these up in a large serving bowl just like this. And I also like to garnish on with a little bit of crumbled cotija or queso fresco cheese. And then for a little freshness or greenery, how about some chopped fresh cilantro or oregano? These beans are so flavorful. And you know what they'd be really good inside of? My homemade corn tortillas. Amazing. I'll see you on there.